followed his career even before that. So he's a giant living in our community, always at the college when we need him. And you can have him here more because more of the students coming through don't understand their Africanness. It seems the more students we get black in the college, the more lack of consciousness, the lack of consciousness is, is, is real. People say, I'm going to me. In fact, it has created a clinic poster teacher. I'm patient and I'm connected. So much so that the Jamaican students have taken over the Caribbean Students Association so the Haitian students and other students don't feel comfortable in the Caribbean students. So it's insanity. And we are African people and we need to have this insanity put aside. <laughs> Let us know that we're African people that have pounded into our head right. and told us about our greatness. It's not the real story happening. We can welcome our brother here. Yeah. Yeah. say good evening and I will sit here I don't know what they're trying to say by putting me to sit but <laughs> uh, there would be times that I'll get up and do what I have to do I asked uh, Dr. Jeffries to give me a hand when it's time to stop so that we could have a question and answer period I was told that I may make my presentation in, in any subject area that I desire. And so I will make it tonight a little in an area that you have never heard me on, I know. It is the Nubian origin of Egypt. Most people speak about Egypt as if Egypt was the first so civilization or society in Egypt, uh, in Africa, and that couldn't be more false than saying that a rabbit is a pigeon. Mm -hmm. Egypt is one of the last of the ancient cultures, if not the last along the Nile. What made Egypt so important is not that it led any African society in antiquity, but that it is the society where most of the artifacts have be remained because it was the first of the African society and the societies of the entire world to, thank you, to place their recordings in stone. That's the uniqueness of Egypt um, uh, uh, in difference to other African societies along the Nile. We cannot place Egypt before the civilian period, civilian first, second, and third, in terms of records. Whereas you can place the societies of Africa at the headwaters of the Nile, Ethiopia, Uganda, Somalia, uh, even Kenya and Tanganyika. We go back to an Egyptian himself, and a very early Egyptian going back in the second and third dynasty who said, we came, we meaning the Egyptians, from the beginning of the Nile, where God happy dwells, at the foothills of the mountain of the moon. As a matter of fact, Nubia was Egypt before Egypt became Nubia. I hope that isn't confusing. It wasn't meant to be confusing, though it is. What I'm saying to you before, the term Egypt in whatever language or words you want to describe it, if you're going to use Kemet, or you're going to use uh, Tameri, 
or Sais or Pearl of the Nile, either word you use, it does not come before Tanahisi. Tanahisi, as a Nubian state, predated that of Egypt. Tanahisi was pre-dynastic. Why don't we have Tanahisi then, or Nubia, highlighted in this school or any other school, or by most African Africanists? African and of course, other people dealing with Africa is because of what the Greeks did, and we still cannot get away from our Gr Greek naval string. Let us go back to antiquity, to history. The point of the emphasis of Egypt is dynastic. The point of the emphasis of dating Egypt's antiquity is based upon artifacts from the time of the Greeks until the present time. Although the, the, the Greeks were not anywhere in society before 1000 BC. What our education have given us in these institutions, including the so-called black institutions, is a Greco-Romano and other European type of African background. And it is that that I wish to deal with this evening. It is that which I am working at the present time in my field diggings, my archeological team, not to prove, because it doesn't need any kind of proof. The facts are there. If we should look at the facts, my reason for coming down the Nile, instead of going up the Nile like most people come to Cairo, they fly into Cairo and then they start in Cairo, going up to Aswan. I start in Aswan and go down to Cairo. One time we even went down to uh, Alexandria for what I do not know. But nevertheless, it must be now emphasized that Nubia is the mother of Egypt, just as Ethiopia is the mother of Nubia, and just as Somalia, Kenya, Uganda is the grandmother of Egypt. If we are to look, no society in human history starts at the end of a river and work up against the current of that river. Because the means by which men would travel up the river had to be locomotion. There was no sailboat for man to use when he first started to navigate the river. He started with logs, solid logs of tree that he realized floated. He then started to tie logs together to give more buoyancy for those of you in engineering. And then men start to hollow out logs in order that he may take much more weight. And that was the beginning of man transportation along the river. He traveled on the river before he traveled on the wheels. He traveled on the river before he started traveling on the backs of other animals besides himself. And we must go back to these to, in order to understand. We must go back to the paintings of the Grimaldis, the paintings of other small African people, namely the Hutu, and also the Kalahari, <clears throat> the Khoi Khoi, and other Africans, especially those that went into Egypt, namely the Sabenatos. I don't have time to talk and to spell his name because I've spoken to you a number of times and by now you should be able to spell those words. <laughs> it was not until as late as the 1500 that Egypt, the same Egypt that we are talking about, became extended to what is now called Aswan, Aswan or Senuset or Senort as it was called. It was 1500 before the common era that Egypt 
took over Nubia from a place now still called Asuit, deep into the southern part of Egypt was the northernmost part of Sudan or Aswan, I mean uh, Onubia. Go back again. If you are accustomed to Egypt and you are in Luxor, you must travel north. That means going down the Nile to at least 200 miles north to come to Asuit. You draw a horizontal line parallel to the equator and run it across Egypt and that's where Nubia up until 1500 which will bring us into the 18th dynasty that was still Nubia. So when you're speaking about Nubia, you are speaking about the creation of dynastic Egypt. And again, that's what we have overlooked in our Greek uh, mythology, in our Greek training, in our European education. The 18th dynasty of 1500 and thereabout bring us at a period of time when we are speaking about the Inhoteps, that would include Akhenaten, it, is, it brings us before the very noted, and in my case, the most noted of the Egyptian pharaohs in terms of what they contributed to society, which will be Ramesses II. And all that happened subsequent to that, however, what is overlooked is the role that Nubia played even in dynastic Egypt. We know of Nubia and we deal with Nubia in terms of one particular person and that would be the wife of Ramesses II, Nefertari II, because we then generally don't speak of Nef Nefertari in terms of second. She is the second. There was a previous Nefertari, which we will speak about later. Nubia not only gave to Egypt Nefertari second uh, or Nefertari first, but Nubia passed on her culture to Egypt. We think of Nubia in terms of the Nubian dynasty, 24, 25, depends on whose chronology you're using, and that would be a point when Egypt will already start to decay. Egypt was already in her dying days, when we are talking about the point when the dynasties were controlled under Nubian tutelage. I am talking about Nubian dynastic influence from the time of Aha, A-H-A, and the time of another man who was confused with Aha, namely Nama. The Greeks were the ones who decided that Nama was the first of the pharaohs, call him Mena, as well as they call him later Menes. But in fact, it was Aha who really started. There were three Ahas, and only two are recorded in Egyptian history. One of the Aha is said to be the first priest of ancient Egypt. Aha, this Aha was the one that introduced the Nubian god to Egypt. But that Nubian god has been carefully suppressed. We are talking about Mendelusi. Mendelusi is said by certain Western historians to be the brother of Osiris. In other writings, he is said to be the son of Osiris and brother of Horus. But in Nubian mythology, if you want to call it that, in Nubian religiosity, Mendelusi is the equal brother of Osiris and the senior brother of Osiris. Why isn't Mendelusi uh, mentioned? When we go to the temple of uh, 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 what is called Kalapsha, that's a German terminology, Kalapsha. 
That temple was Kolo Boyo. Kolo Boyo Temple. K O L O, one word, B O Y O, Kolo Boyo Temple. You will notice that when you go to that temple, there are stones belonging to the previous temple that was there. There are animals of ancient Africa and the Nile in particular shown on those stones but you find nowhere else. And then you recognize that there was a temple there hundreds of years, thousands of years that predated the temple that was built much later equally by Nubian people. Stop and consider who worked the quarries of Nubia. There is not another place in all of Egypt where one can find marble other than Aswan. No place else. And no one can show that any marble was brought from a foreign state, whether a foreign state in Africa or a foreign state in Asia. We do not need, need to speak about Europe because Europe is not in history yet. Then why is it that African scholars have failed to deal with Nubia? The, the, the answer is obvious, because we have failed to deal with our color. And we're still scared to deal with our color. I'll give you an example of this. Uh, African scholars, and I uh, use the term with quotation marks, <laughs> African scholars come to Harlem and they say, Dr. Ben is this, Dr. Ben is that, he brings, introduces us to this, he introduces us to that. Look at their writings. See if you see Dr. Ben's name even mentioned in a negative way. They come after come, and they go after go, and they tell you how great Dr. Ben is. <laughs> and Dr. Ben is still laughing inside. I won't laugh in the face because it's, it's rude, I said. <laughs> but then you take up the latest work and see if in the latest work, I'm not talking about 10 years ago, 20 years ago, in the latest work, they quote everybody that Dr. Ben introduced, even the white ones. The present star in academia that they quote, Bornell, was a fellow that came and speak in my classes at, Co at Cornell up to the last day when Cornell was getting rid of me. They came to find the last piece of information. Today, Bonnell is a superstar, yet he caught me all over the place. You know, I, you, you know um, I am known to be blunt. Take up the last book of, uh, what is it, Africa Revisited or somebody revisited. And see if you see any of those scholars, any one of them, quoting yourself Ben Hirkanen. You name it, and he or she or he and she found it necessary to quote James who I introduced and others, but never Ben Yekanen. Why? Because Ben Yekanen dare equally to say, among other things, that the civilization of Egypt is a black civilization and say it without a benefit of doubt and deal with the rape of Africa in terms of the Greeks of yesterday, the Greeks of today, and all other Europeans combined. And why do I say this? It is, is it, and why can't they say this? Because all of them, or I, I can't say bar none, refuse to do the most essential thing get out of the library, get out of the museum, and go to the field. Take off your three-piece suit and, and the tie. You can use it. I use three-piece suit. This is my camouflage uh, uh, garment, my gig, gig as, as, the, as the brother said. But you have to go to the field to do a deal with that original work yourself. <coughs> If you want to be a mother, you can't be a physician dealing with mothers. You've got to be a mother. 
get pregnant, then you know what it is. You could be a faggot, that don't make you no mother. <laughs> you got, you could sympathize, but you will never know what it is to be a mother. You will never know what Egypt is unless you go and do that original spade work. How could I tell that Nubia is the mother of Egypt? Before I started my latest digging a year and a half ago, the, every time, every time I, I dug a spade, and it's not me alone, there's six other brothers, six Nubian brothers with me, but every time we bring up a, a shovel, I am not looking for the major find, I am looking for the tiniest bit of relic to put me back with the ancient brothers and sisters. But it's not only that. I go back to the old, the ancient people, the ancient modern people, if you want to call them that, those Egyptians, those Nubians who cannot even speak today Arab. You'll be surprised to know that Arabic, that there are thousands of Nubians who do not speak Arabic in Egypt. And they do not speak it, not because they can't learn it, out of contempt for the conquerors. Some people ask, why don't you speak Arabic? You going to Egypt so long. I am not interested in Arabic. I'm not interested in English. I'm not interested in French. I'm not interested in any colonial language so that if I don't speak or speak it uh, out of its uh, proper grammar or whatnot, I don't give a damn. I don't speak it because I hate the damn thing and the people that it belongs to. That's why I don't identify myself as English, French, Dutch or anything like that. Now, in going back then, these are the basics in which to understand, to understand the material that one uses, one must have the frame of mind. One must place oneself in that of the actor, so to speak. One must become Ramesses to understand Ramesses. And one must become uh, Nefertari to understand her. Let us go and see one of the points in which I knew that Egypt was the child of Nubia. The most essential sacred drama in all of Egypt was the Opet festival, the O-P-E-T festival. And the Opet festival came out of another festival, the festival of the love, the romantic prowess of the mother queen of all of Egypt. And I'm speaking about the goddess. Not the goddess that you know commonly and most shown over the heads of the pharaohs when they die, and yet she goes back way time. I am speaking about the goddess, the woman who was involved with the first trinity of the entire world community and the Nile Valley in particular. I am talking about Khonsu's mother. Khonsu is called various names and I'm using the name that you're most familiar with. I am talking about Goddess Mut, not Goddess Nut. They're two different ones, M-U-T and N-U-T. Why is it? that all the writings, there's an emphasis on goddess Nut, but no emphasis on goddess Mut. Because it's clearly stated that goddess Mut is a, is a, a southern goddess. Southern means upper Nile. We must look back and say, was goddess Nut, was, was goddess Nut worshipped south of Egypt? Not at all. The ancient Nubians and Ethiopians, on the other hand, worship goddess Mut. Anywhere you go, to the beginning of the Nile, there are folklore about goddess Mut in Uganda up to the today. As a matter of fact, there is folklore about goddess Mut in Nigeria today, coming to Nigeria by way of the Yoruba religion. There is mention of Goddess Mut in 
all the way in Haiti, in Dambalawedo. Dambalawedo is a transition of the religion that comes to the Yoruba ceremonies. There is mention of Gallus Mut in Manichismo, in Cuba, and even in Puerto Rico, where we are talking about Santarismo, there's a mention of Goddess Mood. So what has happened is that all over the continent there are influences about Goddess Mood. And we cannot avoid it. We see the symbol of Goddess Mood as far south as what was called Munamutapa, before the Europeans tell us we shouldn't call our own country Munamutapa. It is a bad word. And then we uh, turn from that and call it now uh, Namibia and uh, the other name, Azania. I still say Munamatapa. Now, what we have to do then do in this case, and I know it, it may, this lecture may sound rather strange to a lot of you, but I passed a certain stage now. It's introduced, take it, go with it. Now there's other stages you've got to deal with. In other words, we have passed first grade, second grade, we know to pass kindergarten, we know in junior high school, we pass college, you got the doctorate, now let's go to the post-doctoral lessons. <laughs> See, let us go to the one that you can't get in the classroom at all. You must come to the field to deal with this. Let us go to the one where we're talking about upon which the foundation of spirituality of ancient Egypt rests. We are talking now about the mystery system. And we have taken up Professor J James's work, beautiful work at that, at which Richard Moore was alive and a few other people for us to deal with it. I wish Professor uh, uh, Seifert was around for us to really deal with how those thoughts were placed into order in the various uh, works of Professor James before he wrote Stolen Legacy. They ate papers which Professor James published that led up to uh, stolen legacy. What it is that brought about the ancient Egyptian uh, philosophy of God, the concept of God? What is it that brought the ancient Egyptian concept of theology to explain the theosophy? Was it an experience from a supernatural being coming from outer space, as most of us tend to believe it a hocus pocus? Was it, was it some god that fly over uh, some part of Egypt and said, come here, and got up on top of some hill and passed down a tablet or something? Uh, was it any of that? Uh, no, none whatsoever. It was science. The ancient African used science as the foundation for religion. And I guess I should remove the word religion from that. As found in the documents, the ancient Africans in their writings dealt with the first concept of God. The first concept, the universe and all there is in it. All explanation of the totality, this is the reason we start to talk about the universe in terms of a circle. But the ancient African place at the center, that thing about which the universe, that became this, this circle, the universe, was that which contained everything. And the ancient African said that within this circle, there are four quadrants. They didn't use the word quadrants as the English word, of course. But in the center of these four quadrants in this circle, there is a centroid axis. And the Africans, the ancient Africans projected this. And from that projection, and if you carry that to its extent, you will come back again. This projection will be equal to that projection. But if you take this, let's take this or take this. 
and we have this. Let's move this up and we have that. Let's separate them. It's one pyramid and another pyramid. The angle doesn't change. It is out of this, <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, and the projections of this that the inter But did this come from Egypt? Not at all. We see this in the southern, in the southern Africa among the, the Grimaldis. Go to the museum in uh, the, the Metropolitan, the, not Metropolitan, the New York Museum of, uh, uh, of uh, Anthropology down there at 70, and, and, and Central Park West. And you see the, the Grimaldis doing this. But what is the difference? You still have the point of it. This intersection point, that is the intersection point, that is the intersection is still going to give you, the four quadrants is still going to give you a pyramidal uh, sign. But did we break this down? It is here that the original concept came that God is the center of the universe. And God, as the ancient Paul, was Ra. R A. Try R A. Translate R A into English. R will be O R is equal to this. Meridians. God sees and command all that God sees. And that's what the Greeks are calling the mysteries. But the ancient Africans equally went farther and said what? A, B, and C. And out of that developed A square plus B square equals C square. And all other types of uh, algebraic calculation. And that was the mystery. When the Greeks came to Egypt, as a matter of fact, before they even came, when they were on the island of Samoa, when they are uh, uh, learning from the ancient Africans in lodges established by the ancient Africans, they could not understand this to be logical thing. If you drop a plumb back from here, we saw, we saw the, the God here, I would always see Tahuti, the God of measurement and the God of recording, recording every event, there was nothing uh, 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 um, superfluous to him. There was nothing extraordinary to them. The ancient Africans were so acquainted with their tradition, acquainted with what was the ordinary day of life for the common priest. Mathematics was not surprising to them. They had mastered mathematics. And because they master mathematics, they master religion. They master uh, the, the concept of the human feelings against. Thus, the ancient African, when they did this, they equally introduced something which the Europeans cannot conceive up to now. They show you the feather of truth, truth, justice. Ma'at, as it's called today. Ma'at, an Ethiopian ostrich feather, again symbolically, like heart soul. The heart soul. And they put an eye here, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Deal with the heart. The ancient Greeks couldn't deal with this. And therefore, they eventually put the symbols of existence at an arrow. <laughs> they had to have violence going through that heart, just as they have violence in terms of uh, our love making. Uh, even the, the, the lullabies up to now uh, that the present European sing, uh, Rockabye Baby on the treetop. When the cheetah baby, the, the baby can drop and break into two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Humpty Dumpty and the Wog get the damn fall and bust up. And... <laughs> you, you know, every even the little even the little rhymes for the little children go wind up into I mean murder or something. <laughs> so they couldn't think of this kind of thing. The ancient Africans from this. It is from this the ancient Africans used to, under, to conceive the possibility of God. The translation out of this came another aspect that the Africans see. Where we come, we have the circular shape here, we have the circular shape here. And what are we talking? The ancient Africans started to devise methods by finding these chords. What did it mean? Out of this, the African did more. He reversed this and did this. He found the strength of things around him. Most of you young men are in engineering. It's not for only for making a dollar so you could buy a BMG or a G or B or something like that. It is a, these are spiritual dimensions. The ancient African did these. The movement factors here to your maximum movement in here. The moment, listen to it, the moment that you reach the point of resistance and it gives the fluidity of it, you're going to have a bending, right? No division in here. If you pass the moment factor and pass the center of this, you go into a sharing factor. The moment it was a snap. You have that in religion. Religion was a scientific calculation by the ancient Egyptians. Excuse me for those of you who don't deal with strength of material and so forth that, that, that you may not understand, but you're supposed to understand it. What do you mean you don't understand it? You're an African, you're supposed to understand it. If, if we were taught as Africans, as our ancestors were teaching in the school, you, every one of you would have understood it because you would have been taught this. You would not have been taught only for its engineering characteristics to make a dollar to buy you some personal wealth. You would have been taught this to understand the spirituality that is involved with this. And this And this is the aspect that we have forgotten. Yeah. We have forgotten this because the ancient African using the same thing. Said that that represented the law of opposites. <coughs> huh? Law of opposites. For this is that, for this is that, for this is that, for this is that. Everything you go, anytime you move from the center point, there is an opposite. You, you can carry that center point any place, there is an opposite. Anywhere you move it, it is something you said that you translated and said, in order to come, you cannot come out of this force field, right? If you move from here, from the center, to there, in order to stay within the first field, this, although the distance from here to here is greater than the distance from here to here, the force here must be equal to the force there in order to stay in equilibrium. If you rely today, Tomorrow you pay. And tomorrow is not necessary. You lie on the 6th of December and you will pay on the 7th. You will pay on the 19th, 10,000 years later. The Europeans trying to adopt this concept could not deal with it in its Africanicity, thus deal with it that your children will suffer unto the seventh generation for wrongdoings of yourself. Now, you 
You see why we can't find Nubia? We can't see Nubia because wait a minute, this stuff. We've got we've got this. <coughs> Let's turn the projection beam off a little. We got this. So we got where Africa and Asia meets. But we also have this. about the Nile. We're talking here about this Red Sea, by the way, that's, that's being lit, and this is the Great Sea, or the Sea of Sais, and this is the Ethiopian Ocean. <laughs> it has been changed to the North Atlantic, to the South, and the South Atlantic, this has been changed to the Mediterranean. We're talking about a time when there was no European known to be doing anything. It doesn't mean that the water wrong, but they were messing with ice. They had no concept. They didn't even have the idea of making fire to keep them warm. You understand? They, they are talking about a time when the Europeans used to kill, out of every five girls, they killed three because it cost too much to keep a woman alive. So they went to, not polygamy which they condemned, but they went to... No, no. No. The opposite of polygamy, monogamy. Ask me the third factor, polyandry. I mean, you're all going to college. <laughs> Polyandry, where one woman has five or two or more husbands. The opposite of polygamy, uh, poly, uh, uh, monogamy. Now, they, could, they have to do that because they have no food. When you don't have food, you can't be rest, uh, rest full. You have to be restless. You got to be always thinking and getting up getting as little sleep as possible to get out there to catch the next fish coming up in the hole, when you dig the little hole. The Africans here had no holes to dig. They would fish all over the place. <laughs> Didn't mean to dig any hole. The, the vegetation all over the place. So you had time to sit down and to watch the universe. He had time to be here and figure what it would be here. And time to figure here. Thus he understand. He knew by this. He also knew. This is religion. He also knew that at point A, B, C, and C, he looked. He had time to observe. And he knew that it would take 28 days to go here. And he didn't even know it will take 28 days to go here. 28, and he said, the object that he saw here, call it moon. Call it any other thing in the, and that you wanted. And he knew. That's why he knew. The one of them answers the Africans thought about any wall being flat. The Africans knew the wall was not flat because they had already figured the wall was to the point to give us a calendar called the stellar calendar. A calendar based upon the stars that he had seen looking here, he saw there. He then conceived that here was the beginning of the world at a place called Giza, centroid of the 16 pyramids that were there. Hmm? And thus, this nonsense about the African using the pyramid for a water pump. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, it, but, uh, that came because nobody who wrote that went to the field. 
You could not have gone to the field in the tournament and come up with such a thing. You first write it, then you come to the place, look at it and say, yes, I agree with it, so. <laughs> you got to come. You got to come and see it. Because if I drop a puppet and this right here, you see, if I drop a puppet and this, look at it there. It is this same right. If I drop a puppet and this right here, if I drop one from here, you see what's happening all the time? Yeah. It is going to be the same series, it is going to be the same. So the African knew that when he stood at this position, and that's why I know that Nubia was the mother. Because when I go to the temple at Sinod, and the island, the tip of the island is Elephantine, what is called Elephantine these days, it's Sinod. And I dig and find how the Nubians, when I look at Sinod, the temple of Sinod, most of the temples take a rectangular. Most of the temples have their holy of holies. Let's do this. Most of the temples have their holy of holies here. The temple of Sinat, the holy of holies, face here. Face south. From where the source came. Let's take the Nile. This is north, this is south, this is east, and this is west. Huh? Why then, why did they put their temple face south? Let us go to another major temple. Let us go to the temple of, at the great northern temple which is now called Kana, which was called Warit. Where, where is? Here we are. Here is the symbolic. I'm going to put Cairo here, but it doesn't belong here. Cairo doesn't come until the 12th century of the common era. When the Arab and Saladin, the Arab built, established a, 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 a little city called Fustat, F U S T A T, which is today called Cairo. As a matter of fact, there's an old part still called Fustat by the Anybody who knows the history. But let's take the stuff over here, Okayo. And I only use it for references, not an ancient city. Well, we put the stuff there. So therefore, we know this is at the west side. It is here, over here, that the pyramid field is. And the West Bank, whether it is the Giza pyramid field, Asubia, Absoa, any of the pyramid fields, Saqqara, any of them, they're over there. Let us take now the great temple. Of, here is the Nile, here is the east, the, 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 the east side of the Nile. The west side of the Nile is the burial grounds. We are talking now about the Valley of the Kings, etc. Over here, a little way in from the Nile, the Luxor Temple is closer to the Nile, but the, the Luxor Temple, which is the Waset Temple, later called Thebes, <coughs> presently called Luxor. This temple that we're talking about runs in the direction of the Nile? No. It runs this way. The temple of Waset, of, 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 of um, um, Kanak or Warit. And the temple has, this temple has right here, it's holy of holy and it's altar to the west, contrary to the later temples. Why? The temple in the great
great temple of Ramesses II is here, looking this way. But the temple of Ramesses II, looking this way, the, the Holy of Holies is here, looking to the north. As we enter the gate to this temple, the temple, within the temple, now we, we, we're talking of temples for those of you who have been there, temples within a temple. The temple of Amun, the husband of Mut. We go on again. <coughs> Amun, Lord Amun, the wife is Mut. The temple of Amun is here, runs this way. Where is the Holy of Holy? Here, south. And where did God and moon came from? South. Ra and moon both came from the south. Why would the ancients of Egypt take their gods from the south? Why is it that their mythology speak of the first king that rose to the rank of Pharaoh, head of the great house, Pharaoh? was from the south. The south is Luxor. We just said it. Luxor. Using today's name. That is where Naaman and Aha, all of the ancient, the, the, the earliest pharaohs came from the south. The most important pharaohs came from the south. The Amenhotep families did not move their residence until the sun, Akhenaten, Amenhotep III, moved the residence to the north. But why did Akhenaten maintain? What did Akhenaten do to change the whole concept, trying to get away from Amun? He moved the concept. Yes, he did the right thing. He in introduced the concept reintroduced the concept of Amun Ra. Before you become Amun Ra, it is Amun Ra. In the north, it was changed to what? Amen Ra. Amun Ra had become Amen. And after Amen Ra, after Scorpion, the king Scorpion, was defeated by the king, Nama, also called Mena, the Greek lady came later and called him Menes. It is then it became Amen Ra. But we must understand all of this. And how in the world are you going to deal with it if you don't understand it? How can you deal with religion? How can you deal with Jesus Christ and Allah and, 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 and Jehovah and you don't know where these people pick up from? Huh? How can you deal with Allah and Jehovah and you don't have a Jew, one Jew at all, until Abraham arrived? <laughs> Abraham, and you can't deal with him until at best 1675 before the common era. You can't deal with Jesus Christ until Pantheus and Bocchus in uh, Pantheus. And Bocchus. Until at least uh, what is called uh, 25 or so, and he started it, so let's call it one uh, of the common era. And you can't deal with Allah until you got Muhammad. Muhammad, and I'm going to speak to it, write it. This is the only way which, of course, you can't write Allah Muhammad for nobody else but this way. And you can't deal with him until 622 of the Christian era or common era equivalent 
two, uh, one, one of eight after the Hajjah. <laughs> if you cannot relate these factors together, then a few deal with these, just let us deal with modern Egypt. Egypt has already gone a number of dynasties, a number of years ago, we go back to at least 4,100 weeks before the common era. And that is already when Egypt has made a major transition. The book of the common forth by day and by night is already transferred, already translated, already changed. It's already edited. New editions came out. <laughs> but we stop at the book of the dead. <laughs> what we're talking about. And unless we're willing to deal with these things, unless we're willing to challenge the president of the college that we're in, the dean of the college, the dean of education, unless we're willing to challenge them, unless we're willing to challenge the Pope in Rome, and the, 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 the grand great rabbi in, 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 um, in Israel, and who else in England and so forth. Unless we're willing to challenge those suckers, we are not ready to deal with the We've got to be ready. And that's why they can't quote me. They can't quote me writing when it's going downtown. And they can't really invite me to things where white folks are going to be. They can't invite me to things where good Negroes are going to be. <laughs> you got to be waiting because, you know, I can't finish this lecture without getting to this. <laughs> if you're dealing with the center of the universe, <coughs> here is the navel. Umbilical cars come through there. Are we going to have religion without the source of religion? Can you have religion without people? No. Can you? No. Can you have a God without people instead of the God? <laughs> huh? How do you know there's a God? Somebody tell you there's a God. Right? If nobody, there's something they say, if the African say, if a log of wood, if a tree falls down in the forest, and there is no Africans in the forest, <laughs> does the tree make a sound? <laughs> Even if they make it, you don't know about the air. So you need me. And you to say what happened. You need me to say there's God. You need me to establish God. God hasn't established herself yet. If man is God, then man must start people. <laughs> Man to be. <laughs> well, show me one static man that can be I like to be seen as another reason why they can't be Speaking all kind of Greek words and things like that, that I can help that I want to go to the dictionary to understand it before I come to the to here. But you know what I'm talking about, right? See, why should I go in the bar and start saying, uh, fellows, this is imperative. <laughs> <laughs> but I might, and, and, and then a bunch of you start talking and I'm trying to explain. But if I go in the bar and say, shut up, motherfuckers. <laughs> Everybody's on <laughs> it. Because the next thing I'm in my 38. <laughs> now I'm coming to you and tell you, would you please? <laughs> would you please? Yes. Yeah. Because I 
don't give up your condition and know that you control other devil says child. Point. And you start. Your master teach you that. <laughs> your master equally taught you about Adam and Eve. But Adam and Eve don't fit in this. In this equation. Eve and Adam fit in this equation. Alright? Because no way. You see what they said? Gladys, moot. They wrote it down. Gladys, moot. And God, a moon. Right? Because everything you see, when you go to this, again I remind you, go to the Harlem Hospital, to the living room, see how many men lying down. <laughs> there are a lot of men lying down, they shot in the past house, <laughs> in, the, in the living room. But the only thing you see in there, given birth, is Sister African. She is given birth. The brother in the same position flat on the back. <laughs> but he passed out. <laughs> he ain't given a damn thing they're gonna have to give him some and talk. <laughs> but the African did not look at birth. We're talking about his religiosity. We're talking about his spirituality. Thank you. Huh? The brother goes and took this. And he created a goddess to explain to another brother. He took a brother called me. Showed with one hand alone. Always up, one hand. Took the brother, and he took, this is the brother made it. He took the brother penis here. Huh? Look, men's penis here. Look, that one. <laughs> And, mis and mistake me. <laughs> let, us, let us cut the brother, let's cut the brother down center. Take a AA, let's take a view of AA. <laughs> AA to the brother. Let's cut the section to the brother AA, okay? So we got projection of this section. We got the brother. Let's give him some, some bone and his thickness, a white carrot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got the brothers, we got his back, back section here. And we, we start here with his back bone, right? And we come around here because we know this is the soft tissue and whatnot. And we got his stomach here, and then we bring his chest down here. Okay? Now, we know we got the nature of the brother here. We know the normal uh, gonads are here. We call it the balls. <laughs> I don't want to to misunderstand. <laughs> <laughs> and the penis, the penis is normal here. But the African brother and his sister because they were the priests and priestesses, in explaining life to us from a philosophical point, moved the penis from here and put it here that we could see the penis here. An extension of the unumbilical cord. But what is the unumbilical cord? It is an extension of life. It is here that the baby is connected in the womb. Even when the baby comes down here, here's the pelvic here, and it comes up the labia minoria and the labia major, majora. And that's a, 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 a bitch that they talk about, labia minora and labia majora. <laughs>
the construction of his mama, the construction of himself, yes. and what it was all about, the brother was not yet, but the brother is lost. He don't even know his body. The sister is lost, she got a baby, and she can't tell you about how that lady got in there. She doesn't trace the course of the sperm coming out of this penis going into the vagina. She can trace it. No, she don't know what's getting to her father, baby. How the hell she gonna know to take care of the baby? She don't know how the baby got there. Because she doesn't understand that this has a relationship to her sexual intercourse. To her, sexual intercourse is making love. <laughs> <laughs> Last night we made love. How the hell you gonna make love? <laughs> love is an emotional feeling that comes into your psyche, into your mind. That sister, I mean the sister, we talk, and you do not even know how to The sister get into my mind and make my heart feel very hot. She get in my mind, but make my heart stumble. <laughs> but I do all kind of vibrations. Huh? I can't think straight. I can't eat. You know what I mean? The sister, but now I'm going to, but if the sister do that, it got my body rocking. But it hasn't been there. <laughs> my mind, I'm still in balance. See, the love, the physical love, don't change the spiritual respect. Thank you. <laughs> so I can't make love. I go up to the sister, take her to dinner one night, I want to school the next minute. <laughs> And this, unless we could go back and understand this, I said, I know if you know what you're talking, when you have dealt with this and come, you are now a philosophy. I must see in your philosophy. You're a sociologist. I must see in your sociology. You're an architect. I must see in your architecture. This, mm. then I say, you're an Egyptologist. Yeah. You must understand it. You must come home and go and check why men, they move this penis to his umbilical cord because they are reminding men <clears throat> that it's a compliment. It's the opposite of the same alumbilical cord. The person who carries and that's the mother. The Europeans can't deal with the woman being the mother. So he's trying to find a way. He has created a, a plastic vagina and he's removed now. He's trying to make a way in which fertility could happen. He is not, he's not satisfied with the creation of nature. And so this bothers him. It bothers him to the point that if you turn your dial and you want to see a man selling ice, there's a naked woman. Huh? If a man selling a tractor, there's a naked woman. Black sisters, see you could sing. They got top sinners, don't need to be exploited, because she in the video, naked, doing the funky dance, and the <laughs> grind, and the two, and she could sing, she don't need it, but she has to be exploited, because she too is caught up with the European value of making love. Yeah. Huh? You can't make love. You can have sex. Sexual intercourse. And you can have sex without physical contact. I'm not going to tell you that. Just keep on that. But I can have a sexual affair mentally with you. Like most Christian women go to church in the men. Go to bed with Jesus all the time.
down home now. With a question and answer for you. This is what I'm talking about. When you understand that this concept came down the Nile, going to Ethiopia and see it, transmitted from its ancient concept into the drawings as you're going to Fort George, I mean, and you see it. Go into the churches in the wall at Laridala. Take that same trip going down and you see in the, the temples of, uh, 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 of Ramesses II and, and before we got there, go into the Lion Mountain, into Berlin. Then you come down and you see the same thing repeated going down. These are the mothers and the fathers and the grandparents of ancient Egypt. And until we use that, until we understand even the cataract, the, the number, and, the, and, and I change the numbers around, then we will understand. If we understand these, then we cannot cut right in our books using the same distortion that the Europeans use. It is not enough to say, not enough to come in the room and say, Hotel is good, yes. but it's not enough. It's not enough to say one word, you can't the next one that go with it. It's not enough. It's not enough to wear uh, African garment, yes. but one on the street grabbing some white woman, having that day. <laughs> you have to make a total transition. Yes. When you talk about being African, your wife must be African. Your love must be African. You must be African, think African, feel African, love African, everything. You must go through a complete transformation, just as the worm does when it becomes a butterfly. The worm changes to a butterfly, but its gene still doesn't come to the still part of a butterfly. So when you see a butterfly, you see no worm. When you see me, you see my mother and father, and their mothers and fathers to the nth degree. And it cannot change. Therefore, when I steal an apple, the integrity of my parents is gone. And that's what they mean. The sins of the child should part, and the sins of the parents should part and the child seven generations. The sins of the parents part and the child every generation. Not seven generations, but it doesn't have the mythological thing that if a child gets burned with a, a pot of hot water, it is because my grandfather sinned seven generations ago. That's Patrick. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with a man comes in in a restaurant and I'm sitting down and he's hungry. And I didn't give him some bread and I got $50, $100 in my pocket and I see the brother's hungry with that thing running down his side of his mouth for hunger. Don't get the brother the money. Sit down and sit down what you want on the menu. Right. If you can't do that, stop having the damn giant. But just Egypt and all that kind of bad nonsense. You're a faker. If you run from the black community, can't live with black people, you're a faker. You've got to deal with us. You've got to deal with us. You've got to deal with us. And we have to deal with ourselves. And that's what I mean. We've got to go back up the Nile. Then come back and understand Egypt for what she is. She's a beauty. She's my child, she's my mother. She's my woman, she's my sister. But she didn't come first. Let's go back to the beginning of the night. Let's go back to those waterways, those lakes, and go back around there. And look at those small people. Look at us when they give us the ant when they give us other symbols to make what was Egypt. So let us go back to Egypt. When we say those black brothers and black sisters, yes. and they don't come blacker. Mm. Just remember, the black and the meat, the sweet and the green. <laughs> and if we remember those things, and it doesn't say anything to us about life, I got a right mother. Doesn't make a less of us a Nubian more, but the standard of the African woman is the black meat. The standard of the European woman is the black meat. Yeah. Doesn't the little less, those of us who are brown, black, there's, there's shades of that. But we must remember the standard. 
And the standard like that is the standard here. I thank you. accepted uh, brothers who and sisters after the lecture came and uh, started to berate me about beating God in terms of <laughs> engineering mm -hmm. without understanding that when we talk about God we're talking about an entirety there is nothing that doesn't come under the ages of the term God but you see the brother had uh, some of us have a thing which we call uh, religion or we want to use it and, and, and then there's a thing secular and religious that that which we do on Mondays if we're Christian all the way to Saturday is secular and Sunday is separate is religious my point is that that which I do every day every minute every millisecond is religious as well as secular that you can't separate my religion or my religious activity from my uh, um, um, secular activities when I'm involved with, with, with telling a girl I'm in love with her that is secular as religious how can I take away my feelings that's why we can lie easily we could tell a, a woman we love and only looking for a leg because then we have separated our religious activities from our secular activities so then it's easy to leave her as soon as she get pregnant walk out and go out the door because we have said I'm going to the door because with my secular self since my religious self had not been involved with this girl but if my secular and religious self kept me under stress, kept me but unable to break away the two. Then I can't leave my child. I could get married with the mother, quit with the mother, break up, don't have no more relation sexually with the mother, but I can't leave my child. So that the mother become a part of my child as myself. So I've got a forever connection with her. I got the same connection that if I had sex with her, walk out and leave her, because all my intent was to get sex, I still have a connection with her, because any time I see her, my mind going to tell me, you did that girl dirty, right? You can't escape it. So the stress factor is that, no, that is going to, each time I see this young lady, my pressure going to go up, even if it's one point. It's got to go up because the lie is going to deal with me and bring stress. And I said one thing, stress is the worst thing that can happen to you, right? So is it any different than the concept of stress in terms of... Let's, let's take two types of stress. Here, 
Here is a B, and here is the, the cup. But here is a B, here is a wall, and here is a B coming out this wall. Okay. If you put a load here, right, can go to, we can have this in a moment, the bending moment. The height, the maximum point and the minimum point. But this can be different, isn't it? This can do this. The stress can reverse itself because it got down to hold the end, right? Okay. But you still have the same action happening. Now, is there a little stress when I leave my child with the woman, I burn it and don't talk to it, is that a tension? When I go with the woman and just take her body with no intent of doing right and then go away, I get this fluctuating. Here I get the bigger damage when I leave the child because that's impelling. The load is impelling. The load here is fluctuating. I could dance around. I could justify to do it. Oh, well, she didn't get pregnant, so what? See? Here I can't say she is pregnant. Bring me back to the, my mental responsibility of this. Huh? And bring me back to what's coming out of me that is not down here alone involved, but here. I am connected to a child. And just like I made a connection to the child, like my father made the connection with my mother and bring me out, I got the connection. So the idea here continues back here and the idea is no different than the idea here. If this is placed in stress, it will break when it meets its ultimate limit, its elasticity. This will break equally. It tends to shear. It will tend to shear here quicker, but if it doesn't shear here and the load is here, it may, it will bends less, but it reverses the stress, but eventually it's going to break or shear. So does it matter if it shear, break here, or it's break here, it's broken. <coughs> and that's the difference, that's what we are saying, is that the mathematics is no different than a human Theosophical feelings. Dr. Ben, I have one question. You had mentioned earlier about um, ether being the central of the universe, and you found that to be the central area, and you elaborated on that and how that came about. The ancient, the ancient uh, brothers in Egypt, in designing their pyramids and the pyramid field, uh, established that the, the, the center pyramid, the one in the pyramid, what happened in the pyramid field at Giza, you have a, a rugged plateau, rugged plateau, and the, the largest of the pyramids, the one of Khufu, is here, and it's uh, 48 stories, let's say up on the top, 48 stories. 48 stories using 10 foot per floor. Uh, if we have a building, this is floor one, floor two, floor three. 10 foot from one floor to the other. Using that, the pyramid is 48 of these, or 480 feet of, of 48 stories. This would be the one of Kofu. Whom the Greeks call uh, chips. This will be the one of his Kufu's son, which will be Kafra. Look what happens. Look at the size. Let us take a relationship. You see the chart? One, two, three. Three lengths of the chart. Let's take two lengths of the chart. One, two. This is higher than this, but it's not bigger than this. And that would be the one at the Capra, which the Greeks call uh, separate. C H E P H R E N. 
and this is the one of Sephiroth's son, Menkarab, whom the Greeks call Mycerinus. Menkarab. Mycerinus. <clears throat> now, this is the thoughts. What we call the land is highest here. The smaller period look taller, but in fact it's small. Okay. But these are only three of the major periods that's left. There were 16 periods here. Three of the major ones and three of the small ones, the, the ones of the queens, for each of these pyramids still remain. But if you notice, the ancient brothers equally put something here. They put something as we look at the front. Let's take a let's make a projection of it. Equally here, they put something else. Now, this is the head of a human being. This is the body of a lion. Here you walk to an altar. Back of the altar, you have a stella with the words of Finland on it. This is equally thin. It's centered on the center pyramid. And the brother said, this point is equal to this point. So that this is here. The pyramid for this pyramid is here. And that's what I said, this pyramid. It's the theory, and nobody has ever been able to take an instrument and destroy it. All the instrument that take and put there, it turns to true north and south, so that it is still held that that's the center of the earth. But of course, it didn't end, but it wish we'll take it, that didn't by mathematical calculations, by religion. <laughs> okay, if we don't have any other questions, let's give the brother a round of applause. Thank you very much. Activity with the arts and crafts on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Saturday all day and Sunday all day. James is speaking up in, in New Rochelle at the uh, Palace on Main Street, and Lionel has a presentation on at Yonkers on Sunday. <laughs>